As you might know, I am a huge fan of pollinators and bees. And this past weekend, I got to watch a beekeeper as he set up a new hive, and it was super awesome. So in this video, I'm gonna show you a little bit of what that entailed. Here's a hint, there were three pounds of honeybees. Honeybee hives are amazing complex things, though on the surface, they're just a wooden box with a series of frames inside. The complexity and amazingness really comes from the tiny social insects that occupy them. Honeybees have been around for millions of years, but the European honeybees that we keep in hives are not native to the United States. As colonists traveled, they brought honeybees with them, establishing hives as they went. As a result, there are now European honeybees all over the world. Like I said, the construction of a beehive isn't that complicated. It's a wooden box containing a series of frames like this one. It's essentially a wooden frame with piano wire suspended across it to support the foundation. The foundation is the surface that the honeybees will build their comb on. This one is made of beeswax, though some beekeepers will use plastic. The frames sit vertically in the hive so that they can be removed to be checked on and also so that the caps on the honeycomb can be removed later in the season to harvest the honey. This supply of honey is what honeybees use as their food during the winter. They can't go out and forage, so they're completely reliant on the honey that they have to survive. Bees make honey from nectar. They also collect and eat pollen, but only nectar is used to make honey. The foraging bees go out and they store nectar in their honey stomachs and then return to the hive. In the hive, they regurgitate that nectar and use enzymes from their stomachs to turn it into honey. So yes, basically, honey is honeybee vomit. Delicious, sweet vomit. Please do not quote me on that. As I've discussed in previous videos, honeybees are also really important pollinators, so there's a lot of reasons that they're important. Honey is just the sweetest benefit. And that brings us back to hives. What I got to witness this weekend was the establishment of a new hive. So what the beekeeper Pete needed to do was set up a new hive with fresh frames like the one I mentioned. All that was missing was the bees. So the first thing Pete needed to do was remove the queen. She shipped in the same container as the worker bees, but in her own individual cage. It also contains a small layer of fondant, a sugary material that she and the workers will eat through. She'll emerge from that little cage in two to three days. You can see that there are worker bees clustered around her. They're attracted to the pheromones that she's giving off and they're being gently brushed off. I'm gonna try and just rest that gently down on there. With the queen added to the hive, next the worker bees have to be added. And really, there's no graceful way to do this, so here's three pounds of honeybees being dumped into a hive as gently as possible. So there's my three pounds of bees. You can see they're all stuck in the top. I'm basically just gonna put it in there. <laughs> tap them in. As delicately as one can tap three pounds of bees in. <laughs> Try not to piss them off too much. Which you know is tall order when you're pouring them out of a plastic container. Exactly. But. Oh, you can see that. Oh, is that? That's, yeah, wax they had started building. I guess they were stuck in there. They're like, well, we might as well. Right. Um, so it's not particularly graceful. Which you know, understandably. So I'm going to get as many out as I can without standing here for 20 minutes. Honeybees that are being transported like this generally aren't as aggressive because they don't have a home to protect yet. So even though they're flying around like mad, they're not really going to hurt us unless we piss them off. So the hope now is that those honeybees will choose that hive as their home and begin building comb. You may have noticed a jar inside of the hive. That's sugar water, which will function as an initial food source for the bees so they can get the energy they need to build a lot of wax comb very quickly. It was really amazing getting to be that close to honeybees and watching them as they landed on the bee suit I was wearing. Experienced beekeepers will be able to read the mood of their hives, and of course they'll sometimes use smokers to calm them as they inspect the hives. But if you encounter honeybees in your day-to-day -day activities, they really won't do anything to hurt you unless you threaten their hive or accidentally piss them off. I hope you enjoyed this brief glimpse into the art of beekeeping. I'll definitely be making more videos about different aspects of beekeeping because I really enjoyed this and really want to learn more. I also have an announcement to make. I've started a Patreon page. If you're not familiar with Patreon, Patreon is a way for viewers to support creators who are creating free content. All of my content, blog posts, videos will remain free, but this is a way to help me get better equipment, travel to cooler places, and just make better videos. If you're interested, you can click through to my Patreon page and there's a video that gives more information about how that works. And if you can't support me, that is totally fine. All my content will still be here and you can check out that page for updates. I created a Patreon because I really love making these videos and I'd like to make them sustainable and better. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you next time. I got to watch a 